Welcome to Prometheus Day. I'm Ravi Hari, working as a principal software engineer at Intel. The topic is real-time prediction for auto-scaling using uh, Prometheus metrics. Briefly, uh, we are Intuit. Uh, started in 1983, and we have about 100 million customers, and we work on many millions of products. Prometheus uh, is a de facto monitoring tool in Kubernetes. And Prometheus metrics are consumed for various use cases, uh, for example, monitoring, uh, alerting, anomaly detection, and auto scaling, etc. Time series uh, forecasting can be leveraged to make uh, uh, predictions. And in order to make a good prediction, uh, we can follow some rules uh, that uh, we can collect aggregated data to avoid noise in the data. And uh, the data used for forecasting should be updated frequently. Uh, and the horizon in which uh, we predict this uh, data, uh, it should be over a short duration to make this uh, predictions uh, more accurate. Some of the time series uh, prediction algorithms uh, or models uh, that are already existing today are uh, some auto regressive models like ARIMA. And if you add seasonality into it, it's called ARIMA. And uh, uh, some of the other two other models like uh, LSTM, exponential smoothing, and other things are also available. A uh, couple of them are also uh, contributed by some popular companies like Facebook and Google into uh, tools like Profit and Temporal. So uh, we can uh, see how we can uh, use this uh, time series data. So this is the data. Uh, namespace have continuous CPU utilization that uh, uh, we want to. Uh, create predictions for and then see how we can uh, use that in a custom auto scaler. So the data that we have is uh, given here and let's try to use that with uh, Arima. Let's make a quick uh, run of Arima model here and plot the graph. You can see that graph is uh, given here. The red line is Arima model, blue line is actual data. Uh, the trend actually is replicated with the Arima model. Uh, however, there is slight delay uh, in here. Now let's try with the uh, Facebook uh, profit. Uh, let's execute uh, all these things. So here we are uh, uh, using the same data and we are creating the chart and then uh, we are creating a model by considering some seasonality into this. And then um, here is the data uh, with the uh, uh, profit uh, uh, tool, right? Uh, here, a blue line is uh, one that uh, is actually the predicted data that you can see. And dotted lines, as you can see up to here, these are the ones that are actual data. And you see there is a shade of blue here up and above this blue line. That indicates there is uncertainty uh, in this data. And uh, it gives uh, 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 in the lower bound and upper bound for these values. Now let's uh, use this information and uh, see if we can predict uh, the auto scaling uh, on uh, CPU utilization, right? So, so we are getting this uh, data points. Let's uh, now uh, try to see. So, the, so this is a deployment in which there are five replicas, and uh, based on the prediction of the CPU usage, we want to reduce or increase the replica. So, there is a controller already running here. Let me go ahead and submit a CR. Uh, to briefly go over the CR, this has uh, uh, namespace and deployment on which we want to act upon, and lower bound and upper bound CPU. If the value is in between these values, it doesn't do anything. But if the value is above or lesser than uh, the values that we are giving it, it will either add or reduce the number of replicas, right? So let me apply this. So I created this one, and it has acted upon this. And we are watching the deployment right here. So earlier, it was like uh, five uh, replicas. Now that uh, it is reduced by one because the prediction for this is 18% and the threshold we have is uh, 20. If it is less than 20, it would go ahead and reduce it. Uh, here is a simple code for that and uh, uh, here we are calling the prediction and prediction is nothing but a service of uh, the profit thing that we have deployed in the cluster and we are calling that service and getting the value recommendation uh, uh, and if it is uh, uh, in between the boundaries, it doesn't do anything. If it is uh, lesser than lower bound, it will reduce by one, correspondingly for higher values. Uh, so, so we can leverage these things and then optimize our resources and reduce cost uh, 
uh, for the Kubernetes clusters if you're running a cloud provider, right? Uh, that is the demo that I wanted to show. Thank you.